first of all, I'm a singer just as an aspiring singer. That's all. Now, because I'm not a known singer sure. and, and now. So. Uh, back in 1998, I was young and vibrant and uh, full of dreams. And that's when I was singing here and there, like jingles and stuff. I did some jingles for Whirlpool and stuff like that. Uh, that's when an, uh, another jingle for a textile showroom in Trachi came up, which uh, had Mr. Vairamutu's uh, lyrics. And uh, he was in charge of the production of the jingle also. So that's when I met him first. And uh, he told me about my voice and my Tamil diction. And I was, I was writing my lyrics in Tamil. So he was impressed by that. And he said, since I have a great voice, I'm going to uh, give your CD to Mr. A.R. Rahman. So naturally, as a young aspiring singer, I was on cloud nine those days, and I said, "Okay, fine." I okay. went to his, I went to Mr. Bairamuthu's office uh, in Gorambakam, Chennai. The next day, I gave him a CD, and those days uh, we did. 1998 was a time of landlines, no mobile phone, no social media, nothing. So he used to call on my landline number every day. We used to talk about a lot of things because I, I'm um, I'm very fond of Tamil literature, mm. and I come from a family of. Uh, uh, Tamil literature enthusiasts. So I used to discuss a lot with him, and uh, I mean, there is no denying that, uh, I mean, his caliber and that there is no denying that. But uh, as time went on, the conversations became a little personal. And I was getting a little uncomfortable, but since I was too young, mm. I didn't I didn't even know to identify it and respond to it. But one day he directly asked me, you know, he said he was going to Malaysia uh, for an award function in some Tamil Changam award or something like that. And he asked me if I would be willing to join him. I thought he was calling me for a concert to sing there or even anchor there because I was reading news back then in Tamil. So I thought maybe he wanted me to anchor or sing. So when I asked him whether you want me to anchor or sing, he said, neither, just come with me. And that's when it hit me where the conversations have gone, you know, yeah. by the uh, last few days. So I told him, no, I'm not comfortable with this line of conversation at all. And I think we should put an end to uh, talking to each other right now. And uh, he actually tried to uh, lure me saying, you know, I have the capacity to make you a singer overnight. You can be a star overnight or you can be a nothing overnight. So I said, if I have to compromise on my values, I'd rather be a nothing overnight than be a singer overnight. That's my choice. I, and he pulled up a couple of names, which I don't want to mention. And then he sure. said, uh, uh, you should. You don't know how they came up in the industry. I said, I don't care. I'm not sitting on a moral throne here. That's not what I mean. This is my choice. I don't want to compromise my values just to become a huge singer tomorrow. So forget it, I'll walk away from it. Don't call me anymore. But then of course he called me a couple of days later to recheck with me and then he got the message. Mm. And uh, subsequently I was not singing for big films and all that uh, those days. I sang a couple of films, good films actually, good songs actually before that. But then after, I was only singing, you know, those tiny devotional albums and pop albums and jingles and stuff. Uh, slowly they were getting cancelled. So you did reason. feel you did feel the impact of your decision. I did, I did, I did. It took some time for me to understand that because I never knew something in those days. You know, it was so young, and I come from a very conservative family, so I didn't even know that such things yeah. existed. So it took some time for me to understand actually what was happening, and that's when I said, "Okay, fine." I get the message loud and clear, and. Uh, coming out in 2018, I would like to uh, make this very, very clear. Mm. I had my personal agenda there because I was uh, already a nobody. I, I was nothing in the industry. I never pursued anything uh, in the industry. I was only singing on stage. I'm still singing on stage and I'm happy with that. I have my set of fans who love my voice and I'm very happy performing for them. So that is there. But uh, when uh, the allegations began to come, you know, three women, four women and the social media was full of abuses for the victims hmm. uh, because because he was a celebrity, because he was a national name. They didn't believe that he was capable of that. Uh, that's when I thought I had to step in and say that he is capable of that. So my point uh, in coming out was not to get closure for myself because I knew by then I was not going to get any closure. Yeah. But I wanted to substantiate that these young girls who are claiming now 
there is definitely something in their allegations because I went through this with Mr. Bairam. You know, I I just want to add here, Bhuvna, that there's no need for you to really justify or defend yourself. What you have leveled here is extremely serious. Uh, and from what you're telling us, this perhaps could have happened with so many other women who just like you decided to back off and say, hey, this is where I draw the line. There are about 17 to 18, as you've said, who've spoken out just like you, who've been brave enough to actually take a stand against Vairamutu. Because if anyone who's in Chennai, who's grown up in Tamil Nadu, knows how influential he is. And that's very clear right now also in the response. Response. You spoke out. Did you see any action or at least a nod in your direction when you spoke out? No, no. There were some abuses in, on social media, but uh, I, like I said, I had a group of, I have a huge circle of uh, people who know me and people who love my singing. So uh, they, they believed me and they were standing by me so I could take all the social media abuses because they were giving me a lot, my friends were giving me a lot of strength. And my son, he was a teenager and uh, I mean, uh, he was very courageous. He gave me all the strength to go through it and he, he kept on telling me, ignore social media. He said, social media is a virtual uh, garbage can, just forget it. Don't even read the comments. So I was getting support from my son and my friends. So I did not feel much of the pain and as it is, I was nothing. So I, but she was banned for five years. The last five years, she has been banned. That's not fair. Pull her up, have a dialogue with whoever is accusing, whoever is throwing allegations, the minimum. Uh, the industry can do is pull up and uh, have a dialogue, but nobody was even willing to uh, talk to us. That was mm. what is uh, that put that saddened me a lot because I could see a, a you know number of youngsters, young girls who are not able to speak out. I think only four of us were willing to come out with our names and faces. Yes. The others were anonymous. That was so sad. Those voices are already stifled. And you can understand that. You know, they must be scared. They must already feel <laughs> defeated because there are so many high-profile names like Chinmay who have spoken out and nothing's happened. She's such a popular singer. And despite that, no action has been taken. You've spoken out. You know, you have that kind of strength, the moral support that you need to speak out. There are countless women, I'm sure, who don't have that. But does it shock you in a sense, Bhuvana? Is it a reality check of sorts that, you know, despite this, nothing has happened? If we're talking about protection from the film industry, we're talking about... Uh, protection also from political circles for everywhere any industry if you take it for uh, that matter you know any industry you should have some kind of accountability uh, it's always the victim that's backing off even if she is willing to come out and say something at some point uh, she stops herself and says i'm not able to take this let me step back but I, I'm really surprised and uh, I mean hats off to Chinmay for continuing her fight in spite of so much and in spite of being banned, in spite of her caliber, she has probably sung four songs in the last five years in Tamil. You know, let's, let's very, get a word in from Chinmay. Uh, Bhuvna, just stay with me. Uh, Chinmay Shripada is also with us. Chinmay, you've been very vocal on this issue. We've had you here on India Today several times where you've spoken out publicly against Vairamuthu. Bhuvna also has spoken out before. So you share a similar ordeal in the sense that both of you have spoken out against Vairamuthu and there's been no action. She's hailed what you've done. She says what you did inspired her also to speak out to ensure so many other women who faced a similar ordeal have the guts to actually come out and take a stand against Vairamuthu. But realistically speaking, Chinmay, does it make a difference? Countless women, 17, 18, you make it 25, you make it 30. It looks like this man is untouchable. That's right, because I have been saying this, I think from left to right, whatever the ideology is he continues to get a lot of support and a lot of uh, help uh, across the world of a lot of people. That is the kind of uh, uh, clout he's built up over the past several decades, being uh, someone who can wield that amount of power here in, uh, not just in Tamil Nadu, but wherever there is a significant amount of Tamil population across the world. And um, as we have been debating this, despite all the, you know, the discussions and debates and uh, you know, all of us speaking on um, on these channels, uh, the government has basically announced uh, uh, a gift of a house to him, uh, one of uh, several. So that that has just come out today on the social media circle. So which is why I'm saying, it uh, either Bhuvana or I, we are not looking really at uh, you know justice or inquiry or anything like that because we thought we had these grandiose dreams that perhaps you know an independent inquiry would that would be 
absolutely just would conduct we would be conducted but it didn't happen so at least what i think we the, the leave that i asked is not be incarcerated for speaking up uh, why why in such a hurry to ban me and uh, you know ruin other people's careers just because we spoke what everybody already knows so everybody in tamil nadu knows this it's an open secret so that's exactly what i'm saying Is this is this a pattern in me because from what Bhuvana said you know she was a young singer uh and this was back in the 1990s that she was trying to make it big in the industry was singing a few songs here and there and it was completely sidelined do you believe that this is an actual trend on the ground that this legendary lyricist is using his clout to target young singers even today Yes absolutely uh, young uh, you know around 16 17 18 just about that's how he you know goes about picking his uh, you know no his victims that's how it's always worked because we are you know old enough but uh, you know young enough to not uh, speak out because we are scared that's generally been how he has worked uh, that has been his modus operandi and i have said this also most of the women who have spoken up the first encounter with him has happened when we are barely 18 and we don't have the power or the uh the courage to speak up and you know you know how it is it's very difficult for our families to support us uh and say yeah let's go to the police station and lodge a complaint and despite an ncw complaint and despite police coming home and taking a handwritten complaint from me nothing has gone anywhere and it won't that's exactly what i'm saying it will not against this man because mm. that is a cloud that he holds so you and believe nothing's going to change until the cows come home you I'm believe sorry? nothing's going to change chinmay uh, you know in no, tamil nadu no. you don't see any uh, politicians taking a stand any film stars taking a stand against vairamuthu any time now no it's not going to happen bhuvna you wanted to also make a point where where is anybody taking a stance against anybody in this country all over the world in fact so i'm not looking for a closure here because mine is insignificant my story is absolutely insignificant but not her story i'm saying she was banned for no fault of hers a minimum dialogue should have happened is what i have always believed in a minimum dialogue they could have called her and in, in instead of holding an internal meeting and banning her they could have at least pulled her up and asked her why are you doing this at least pull her up and have a dialogue that is the only thing and i don't want uh, the young talents and young dreams to be crushed anymore at least if, uh, after that if mm. some accountability has uh, can be brought into any industry for that matter i would be very very happy But so my you know my only question is bhuvna and chinmay chinmay to you first why should we settle for the bare minimum here why are we all saying look we've come to terms with reality that no action is going to be taken against vairamuthu is that the problem for starters that we all all believe that he is larger than life and so no action can be taken against him chinmay but isn't that our lived reality we have come to terms with it because who is going to be fighting for us on a daily basis yeah everybody moves on everybody has their own battles to you know fight and the, and i have been fighting for my right to work for the past 5 years hmm. the ban against me is incorrigible everybody from the industry has just you know shut up and watched and done nothing about it while they have continued to platform him for whatever their great reasons are that's exactly what i'm asking that here i think today nobody actually has a moral upper ground to say that we have stood and done the right thing you know forget kin mai forget bona sessions so forget you know all of us who you know become sacrificial you know lambs and these people uh, you know uh, you know whatever you know i'm all that i'm asking is why can't at least now can there be icc's and talk to units in an industry which hires children with higher people why can't systems be in place so that there can be a safe support system but then i'm asking for something because how the the man who banned me is also somebody who has uh, uh, cases of harassment and abuse against him so if i have to go and report to him uh, uh, you know about him to him what is my way out so basically the wolves are running the show and we are expected to get justice from them how is it going to happen it's not going to uh, uh, you know what's shocking so yeah sad. You know what's shocking to me is that so many of you have spoken out so publicly. You've put out so many details, Bhuvana. You recounted what's happened with you just minutes ago, and you've repeatedly done it. Despite that, there's no action. This happened to you in 1996, 2023. No action taken, and perhaps this is still happening in the industry. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not in the industry, so I am nothing. I have. I cannot. You know, uh, or nobody has come to me with that, so I cannot say. But then. Uh, 
I cannot I cannot say it doesn't happen either. So it happens elsewhere. We read so much. So my point is only that I know I'm not going to get closure, but I want some kind of accountability at large, as a larger picture for the the harassment and the victims, the voices of victims. Somewhere there should be some kind of an accountability. Like like I said earlier, she was banned. Like. Just like that, uh, nobody even asked her a question. I think she uh, merited that that much, you know. Having been in the industry and with such caliber, mm. somebody could have at least pulled her out from the union and asked her what happened. Why Has are you ever coming happened? out? With Chinmay, have you ever received any sort of reassurance or any protective hand over you from some of the film stars that you worked with? You worked with some of the biggest names in the southern film industry, and despite that, did you get any support really? No, not me. But he got it. He got it rather publicly as well. Yeah, of course, uh, of course. I, I, I would say the Kerala film industry showed a bit of a difference there when they came and spoke to us when uh, he was uh, nominated for the ONV award. Mm. Uh, the Kerala film industry spoke to us, and uh, ultimately, that ONV award was not conferred on uh, Mr. Vairamuthu. So that was something commendable, and that gave me a lot of strength and more strength and hope that you know uh, somebody is listening to us. But you know, it's so brazen in the sense that you think that with these kind of serious allegations, people who at least shy away from publicly and openly supporting him, from having these photo ops with him. Bhuvna and Chinmayi, where do you think the buck really stops? Is it with political parties? Is it with the film industry? Who really do you believe should be acting, cracking the whip here? Bhuvna, to you first. Entire uh, section of people, I would say. See, the moment you start uh, pinning any kind of religious caste or political affinity to any issue, you will not take a step forward. Mr. Vairamuthu is a big name socially, politically, nationally, even internationally to, in the Tamil uh, population. So it, it is very, very tough to crack that and, and you know go through. And I have no evidence to show, not even a phone conversation because I didn't even have a mobile in '98. So nothing to show. So people are going to ask me for evidence, which is why I shied away from filing anything. You know, even in the union or with the police, I didn't yeah. want to do it because. But it's you know, not let's be realistic. Me. Let's be realistic with what we've seen. Even if there's evidence, it doesn't look like it will, you know, translate to any sort of action against Vairamuthu Chinmayi. That question to you finally: Where do you think the buck really stops, or with whom? With all of us with all of us in society, all of us who hold all of these people in such deified forms that we fail to ask them the questions and hold our leaders accountable when they platform such people and continue to work for the same people time and again. Very true. And let's hope that, you know, with all of uh, you speaking out in the manner that you have so bravely and boldly, it encourages many others to speak out. And let's hope that actually makes a difference. So far, 18 women, let me repeat that, 18 women have spoken out against Vairamuthu and it's made no difference whatsoever, as you can see in some of those pictures also that we're showing you right now from the support that he's received from the highest and the biggest faces in Tamil Nadu politically and in the film industry. Chinmay, Bhuvna, more strength to you. And we promise here on India Today we'll continue giving you a voice and ensure that it at least translates to some action against Vairamuthu. He's a legendary racist. He may have his way with words, but does that mean that there will be no accountability for his actions? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. And how many women, how many singers really in the industry are currently suffering because of a lack of action against this man? Thanks very much, Bhuvana and Shinmayi, so for joining much. us. Thank you. world's biggest military standoff between the world's two biggest nations has remained active for three years now. With the Indian and Chinese armies deployed in massive numbers along this northern frontier in Ladakh, China's original aggression here hasn't been resolved in full. Then there's an uptick in Chinese provocations in Arunachal Pradesh's Tawang sector including this undated incident where a Chinese unit was savagely beaten and pushed back across the LAC.
Apart from these military aggressions in Ladakh and Arunachal, China has also been insidiously attempting to change the map by building model villages very close to the border in Sikkim and Ladakh. And now, satellite imagery obtained exclusively by India today provides irrefutable evidence confirming recent claims of construction of military villages in the middle sector directly facing Uttarakhand. Notably, these are new locations that till now have not reported any India-China tensions. Analysis of commercial satellite pictures with us suggests these structures were built at a very rapid speed. In some cases, about a hundred structures were raised over a period of just one month. Just 40 kilometers away from the Pulam Sumda in Uttarkashi, such structures started showing up between April and May 2022. Incidents of increased activity in another region towards the east near Barahoti have been reported in the past too. Barahoti has frequently reported face-offs between Chinese and Indian troops, but these new structures are in different areas. This would suggest the Chinese are enhancing their military presence across the sector. China has adopted the practice of constructing residential complexes in the forward areas separating India and China for some time now. Originally intended for civilian use, including sports and recreational amenities, most of these villages now remain empty. According to Indian military sources, the lack of migration by civilians from the mainland to these border villages suggests that they are primarily intended for China's military purposes. These residential facilities are capable of accommodating an increased deployment of troops with minimal notice. Indian Army sources confirm to India today that they are aware of the new constructions and are keeping tabs. One thing is clear, China is opening another front. With Ankit Kumar in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. All right, Chetan, thanks so much for joining us with all the latest on Elon Musk and Tesla. Now, sticking with the auto industry, Maruti Suzuki has rolled out its much-awaited SUV, the Jimini. It's at a price tag of 12.74 lakh rupees. The car will come in six variants, with the base model starting at 12.74 lakh, that's X showroom. The top-end Alpha AT dual-tone model at 15.05 lakh, X showroom. With this, Maruti is aiming for a 25% share of the SUV market in FY24, with volumes close to 475,000 units. The lifestyle SUV, which is pitted directly against the Mahindra Thar and Force Gurkha, will be retailed across all 600 Nexa stores in the country starting today. The man behind the AI revolution is here in India. Open AI founder and CEO Sam Altman. Uh, with India's uh, G20 Sherpa Amitabh Khan today in New Delhi. The discussions focused on the potential of generative AI and how emerging economies can leverage this to improve the quality of life of citizens. Altman's visit to India is significant as it comes at a time when the country is keenly looking at AI research and development. Is your child constantly playing video games? Is your child addicted to online gaming? Does he or she play Fortnite? Here's an SOS sent out now by the UP police. The Uttar Pradesh police has uncovered a shocking plot. Believe it or not, the likes of Zakir Naik and Tariq Jamil are now using online gaming apps to radicalize youngsters. 
the immensely popular online gaming app Fortnite is being used to target young children for religious conversion. According to the information received by the police, four minors from Ghaziabad have allegedly been radicalized and converted to Islam. And here's how the hate preachers did it. चैट में जब हम लोगों ने डिटेल स्टडी करी तो उसमें बहुत सारे जाकिर नायक जिन पर प्रतिबंध लगा दिया गया था भारत में उनके वीडियो शेयर करे गए थे नमाज अदा करने के तरीके इस्लाम के फायदे सरकम कराने की टेक्निक तो उस सत्य के वीडियो शेयर करे गए थे और इनको लालच दिया जाता था कि ये इस्लाम में कन्वर्ट हो जाए माइनर्स लॉकड इन एंड प्लेइंग फोर्ट नाइट व टारगेटेड इफ दे लॉस्ट दे वुड बी आस्ट to recite the Quran and then if they won the game they would be convinced it was because of the prayer chant kids were made to watch islamic videos particularly those of hardliners like tariq jamil and they were even asked to visit mosques and offer prayers protest broke out over this brazen conversion racket as right wing groups hit the streets of ghaziabad demanding action भारत के अंदर अभी तक हम लोग ये देख रहे थे कि हमारी बच्चियों के साथ में बहुत उनको गुमराह करके उनको शादी करके उनका धर्म प्रदर्शन किया जाता था अब हद हो गई कि आज नाबालिग बच्चों को चार बच्चे गाजियाबाद से एक मुंबई का निकला है पांच बच्चों की अब तक जानकारी मिल चुकी है पता नहीं कितने बच्चे होंगे जो गेम के बहाने से उनके लिए उनका उनको मस्जिद बुलाया गया मस्जिद में उनसे अजान नमाज पढ़वाई गई वहां आयत पढ़वाई गई इस प्रकार से बच्चों का माइंड वॉश किया जा रहा है उनका धर्म परिवर्तन करवाया जा रहा है ये बिल्कुल बर्दाश्त से बाहर है इंडिया टूडे हैज ऑल्सो एक्सेस्ड व्हाट्सएप चैट्स दैट शोज यू हाउ द रेडिकलाइजेशन टुक प्लेस accused cleric Abdul Rahman alias Nanni is seen chatting with a minor victim talking about namaz and visiting a mosque this sensational online radicalization plot has put the focus once again on regulation of online gaming apps and how hate preachers are now using technology to target minors with Arvind Ojha bureau report india today Sorry